What's going on, guys? It's your boy Dom Kemp, and tonight we are back at work with another podcast. Just want to say, first and foremost, happy Friday to everyone. It is the weekend, so it's going to be pretty fun this weekend, especially with uploads and things of that sort. So stay tuned for that. But, guys, we are on some soccer news, some of the top soccer news in the world right now, courtesy of ESPN. But, guys, I'm going to put my own twist on it. Those of you who have listened to my podcast, I end up putting my own twist and providing my opinion on the articles that ESPN do put out. So that is where I get most of my information from, just to let you guys know about that. But other than that, let's jump straight into it, guys. And the big story is is this, transfer talk. Real Madrid planned 500 million sterling spree to buy Harry Kane, Eden Hazard, and David De Gea. That was in the Daily Mail. But guys, we're going to read about it. That's going to be the topic of discussion. But first and foremost, since I am a Manchester United fan, Alexis Sanchez is now a Red Devil. He is now a Manchester United Red Devil. Moves from Arsenal to Manchester United and Hendrik Mkhitaryan, hopefully I'm saying that correctly, goes to Arsenal in a swap deal, plus, of course, a little bit of cash. So pretty interesting there. But first and foremost, let's talk about Sanchez inspiring Man United to, uh, to victory versus Yeovil Town in his uh, debut, guys. So pretty interesting. Let's jump straight into it. Manchester United traveled to Yeovil Town in the FA Cup, a ground and a side that looked as if they could provide a significant challenge or perhaps even an upset, and came away with a 4-0 victory. The scoreline did not reflect Yeovil's fine performance in the opening stages of this game, yet they were ultimately worn down by the firepower of the away side. Positives. Alexis Sanchez did not score, but on his debut he was the, the inspiration behind this victory, utterly tireless in attack. Marcus Rashford and Ana Herrera recovered from poor starts to be decisive. Anel Gomez and Jesse Lingard also looked very good in late cameos. Negatives. Scott McTominay's passing was too often non-ambitious, as was that of Ana Herrera, and that nope. And the center backs initially struggled to pick up their men. Manager rating out of ten, seven. Jose Mourinho was rewarded for taking something of a gamble. By making so many changes, several of his best players were now rested, and he gave the supporters their first look at Sanchez, who already looks an excellent acquisition. Player ratings, 1 through 10. 10 equals the best. Players introduced after 70 minutes get no rating. The goalkeeper, Sergio Romero, had a 7. The ball got through to him a little too much for comfort in the early stages, but he was equal to the task, catching or pairing away whenever and called upon and generally looked in control of his, his, his area. The defender, Matteo Darmian, a very poor opening half, saw him exposed for speed and positioning, but in the second half, he raised his game and ventured forward more than usual. The defender, Victor Lindenlov, 6, still looked very tentative for long periods, both in defense and when stepping forward. The player he was at Benfica is still to emerge. Mati- no, Marcus Rojo, 6, get forward with his usual ambition in the end, supplying Romelu Lukaku for his team's fourth goal, still easing his way back in the form, but his attacking outlook is of great value to the squad. The defender on the left side, Luke Shaw, 7, an industrious first half and slightly quieter second as United broke clear of Yeovil. His energy and incentives... Uh, uh, and incisive running were vital in the early stages. Midfielder Michael Carrick, 7. It was difficult to tell he had had so little football of late as he prompted whatever attacks he could from the base of midfield and screened the defense with his usual efficiency. Midfielder Ander Herrera, 7. An improved second half followed a poor first where he struggled to get the ball into feet in the final third and seemed to have a very defensive mindset. Finished smartly for United's vital second. Midfielder McTomney, 5. Never truly found his feet with his first instinct being to pass sideways or backwards, perhaps a sign of poor movement ahead of him, but maybe also of a lack of confidence. Midfielder Juan Mata, 6, could not get too much of a passing tempo going. His movement was good, but he struggled to find a way through Yeovil, though perhaps the pitch's highly uneven surface hindered his style more than most, scored his team's vital second. Midfielder Marcus Rashford, 6, had a difficult first half for the most part, not looking at his sharpest in touch and movement, but he preserved and was rewarded with the game's opener, shrugging aside two defenders to slot home. 
had a stronger second half, and his confidence seemed to have returned by the end. And then forward, Alexis Sanchez, 8, added so much to this team with his intensity constantly seeking possession and trying to play the killer pass. His incessant efforts, solo runs, cross-field balls, wing play led to United's breakthrough just before halftime, just as the anxiety was rising in several quarters. He then provided an assist for United's second. He already looks to be an important signing. Then, of course, the substitutes, guys, Romelu Lukaku, Jesse Lingard, and Anjo Gomez. Not much of a big deal there, guys, so we're just going to continue to move on. But this is what we are talking about. The main thing right now, guys, is going to be what is Real Madrid trying to do? What is Real Madrid trying to plan? And how will they get $500 million or to spend on these three players? Great players in general, but we're going to have to find out. Real Madrid plotting Premier League raid for Kane, De Gea, and Hazard. With less than a week to go in January, when in the January transfer window, Transfer Talk brings you live updates on all the latest rumors and done deals. Plus, check out the completed moves. So, Real Madrid, if you're not very familiar with them, they are a Spanish league team, and they have one of the best players in the world in Cristiano Ronaldo in that sense, so he's still there. But I'm trying to understand how they're going to get $500 million and spend it on all these great players. Here it is. It, it has been a miserable season for Real Madrid so far. The reigning La Liga champions currently stand 19 points behind runaway leaders Barcelona and were unceremoniously dumped out of the Copa del Rey this week by a 2-1 home defeat to local neighbors Leganes. Just how do they plan to turn the ship around? You might be wondering by spending big on the best talent the Premier League has to offer. The, the Daily Mail reports that Madrid will splurge up to 500 million sterling to complete a hat trick of blockbuster signings Eden Hatter. Eh. Eden Hazard tops Florentino Perez's wanted list with the club president prepared to break the official world transfer record by bidding $200 million while David De Gea and Harry Kane complete the stellar lineup of reinforcements. And who will lead this new team of Galacticos? Well, the Mail also claims that Mario Pochettino is being lined up to replace Zinedine Zidane in the hot seat, having impressed the Madrid hierarchy with his reign at Tottenham. The report states that the Spanish Giants have made contact with Pochettino's representatives, but Daniel Levy is bound to put up a fight to keep the Argentine at Spurs. Arsenal Lodge Nevin's bid. First and foremost, before I move on, guys, this is what I wanted to talk about. It's going to be interesting going into next season. If not, they make a change now to see who, we, who Real Madrid's head manager is going to be. Now, man, the thing is, not all this can be blamed on Zinedine Zidane. Cristiano Ronaldo's not showing up. Gareth Bale's not showing up. Players of that sort aren't really showing up. So, oh, that's the thing. Most of the time, even when players, mm, players don't show up, the manager always gets blamed. That's not on the manager. That's on the players not wanting to play. That's all my input there. But how do you, how do you guys feel about Possibly Real Madrid trying to sign David De Gea, Eden Hazard, and Harry Kane, all from the Premier League, Premier League stars in their own right. But let's move on. Arsenal Lodge Nevin's bid. Good Evans. Arsenal have finally stumped up the cash to try to sign long-term defensive target Johnny Evans from West Brom, who used to play for Man Manchester United, by the way. According to the Daily Star, the Gunners have offered 10 million sterling for the Northern Ireland International, along with right back of M M oh, Matteo Debushi. And Evans is valued at $23 million by the Baggies, but it has reported that the 30-year-old has a clause in his contract allowing him to leave for just $3 million if the club are relegated. So if West Brom are relegated, Johnny Evans, and Arsenal can pick up Johnny Evans from West Brom for $3 million instead of $23 million. Insane. That could tempt manager Alan Pardew into selling this month and reinvesting the funds in his squad with Man City and Leicester also expressing an interest. Juventus Chase Adadimian. Matteo Darmian may have found an escape route from his disappointing spell at Manchester United. The Italian international has struggled to hold down a regular place during his three seasons at Old Trafford and is now on the radar of City I champions Juventus, according to The Sun. Jose Mourinho would be willing to part with the 28-year-old, but United want to finalize an immediate 26 million sterling transfer, while Juve would prefer a 12-month loan with the obligation to buy for 19.25 million at a later date. 
And Dadamian played 90 minutes in United's FA Cup victory over Yeovil on Friday night, but his days in Manchester appear to be numbered. Looking at a couple of the tap-ins, guys, Newcastle are refusing to sell striker Alexander Mitrovic to another Premier League team, reports The Telegraph. The 23-year-old is the subject of an $8 million bid from Brighton, but Rafa Benitez is reluctant to strengthen a relegation rival. Meanwhile, the Magpies will have to pay $25 million if they want to sign Feyenoord's Nikolai Jorgensen claims the Northern Echo. The Denmark international has claimed 7 goals and 3 assists and 14 Eredivisie appearances this season. Chelsea have set a Monday deadline to complete a deal for Roma striker Eden Dzeko, says the Telegraph. If Dzeko hasn't finalized the move to Stamford Bridge by then, the Blues will look elsewhere. But Chelsea can't forget. No, but Chelsea can forget trying to sign West Brom Salomon Rondon this month, reports the Daily Mail. The Baggies will not entertain any bids for the striker as they look to secure their Premier League status. Pretty interesting, guys, right there. Those are a couple of things that are going around the world of top soccer right there, guys. So pretty interesting. Not uh, the longest podcast, but definitely not the shortest either. But it looks like there's a little bit more, guys. So here we go real quick. Transfer Raider Eric Lamella to Roma, Javier Pastore to Tottenham. Literally, the Tottenham Hotspurs have so many midfielders. Deli Alli, Erickson, um, Deli Alli, Erickson, the Wanyama. There's another one that I'm missing. Let me know in the comment section down below. But there's just so many, guys. It's just insane to think about how many midfielders Tottenham has. It's crazy. It's insane. Not to say the younger midfielders as well that are going to be on the come up. Interesting to think about, guys. But I think that's all I have, I think, here. Let me try to go back on this screen again. If it's not going to let me, then I won't. Okay. Javier Pastore from Paris Saint-Germain to Tottenham Hotspur, maybe. Laven Kurzawa from Paris Saint-Germain, maybe to Chelsea. Arthur Masuaku. From West Ham United, maybe to Roma. And Jack Harrison from New York City FC in the MLS going to West Ham possibly, guys. So, there's a lot of chances and there's a lot of whispers going on around the world of soccer. Or football, for that matter. Pretty interesting, guys. But that is all I have for you guys tonight. Those of you who are top soccer fans, be be informed and be ready because guys there's going to be more soccer podcasts coming soon due to the fact that it is it is the january transfer window and i'm kind of upset that i didn't start it at the beginning of january so that i could put my input on it and see if my transfers would have fallen through but of course an amazing signing guys from Manchester united and getting rid of hendrick mkhitaryan he did have a short spell at Manchester united from Borussia dortmund but guys he wasn't as impressive <coughs> excuse me but he wasn't as, as as impressive as many Manchester United fans wanted. And the thing about Alexis Sanchez, he wants trophies. He wants silverware, guys. And that's the thing. What better place to want silverware than Manchester United? That's all I got to say about that. But, guys, of course I'm a Manchester United fan. Those of you who are Arsenal fans and all these teams fans, let, let me know how you feel about a possible transfers to your team nor away from your team. Your team selling your favorite player or not selling your favorite player? Let me know, guys, in the comment section down below. Who do you think should be transferred, guys? There's literally less than five days left in the transfer window, guys. So let me know who you would send away, who you would want to bring into your club, and I will be sure to comment down below and respond to you guys. Once again, guys, thank you for 43 subscribers. We are moving up there almost at 50. My goal is by the end of next month to be at 50 subscribers. So much appreciated to those of you who have been supporting the channel as of late. Thank you so much for our support, guys. Of course, I will continue to upload daily, guys. It doesn't matter how many uploads there are a day, but all that matters is that you guys get your sports content first from this channel so much appreciate thank you for support and have a good day peace guys